So in this video, we're going to be proving that the absolute value of 1 minus z w conjugate or squared minus the absolute value of z minus w squared is equal to 1 minus the absolute value of z squared times the 1 minus the absolute value of w squared. And in this case, z and w are complex numbers. To prove this, we're going to use the fact that z times its conjugate, so any complex number times the conjugate of that complex number, is just the absolute value of that complex number squared. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Instead of having uh, these absolute value signs here, I'm going to use this identity to rewrite these absolute value signs. So 1 minus z times the conjugate of w all squared in absolute values, that's the same thing as just writing 1 minus z w conjugate times 1 minus z w conjugate, but I've got to take the conjugate of this whole thing. So I'll put a bar over this whole thing, just as it says in my identity. That's minus the absolute value of z minus w all squared. Well, that's the same thing as z minus w times z minus w conjugate. So let's see what we can do with this. Well, the first thing we're not going to do is I'm going to try and uh, distribute this sort of conjugate sign. And what do I mean by that? Okay, well, let's, let's see what we can do. Well, this is 1 minus z w conjugate. Well, the conjugate of a real number is just a real number because the conjugate of, a, of 1 is just 1, for instance. So that's 1. Minus z w bar. Now, I've got to take a conjugate of this whole thing, so to do that, I take the conjugate of each one separately. So, what's the conjugate of z? Well, it's just z bar. And what's the conjugate of w bar? Well, that's w bar bar, but the conjugate of a conjugate is just that complex number. So, that's just w. So, if I have a complex number and take its conjugate, and then I take its conjugate again, I just get the complex number back. So, w bar bar is just w. I then got to subtract z minus w times the conjugate of z minus w while distributing the conjugate sign. This is just z bar minus w bar. So now it's just a matter of expansion. This is just 1 minus z bar w minus z w bar plus z z bar w w bar. I've also got these brackets to worry about, and this becomes, let's give this some space. So this is minus, well, z times z bar is z z bar. Uh, z times minus w bar is minus z w bar, with this extra minus sign becomes z w bar. Uh, what else have we got? We've got minus z bar w, or minus w z bar, which is just plus z bar w. And in the end, we've got minus w, w bar, because minus w times minus w bar is w, w bar, and we've got this extra minus sign. Okay, well, the first thing you might notice is that I've got some cancellation of terms. So I've got a minus z bar w here and a plus z w bar here, so these two terms cancel. Any other terms cancel? Well, I've got minus z bar w and plus z bar w here. These are the same, so I can also cancel these. So I can also cancel these. And what am I left with? I'm left with 1 plus z z bar w w bar minus z z bar minus w w bar. Well, at the, at the beginning of this video, I said that a complex number times the conjugate of that complex number is just the absolute value of that complex number squared. In other words, z, z bar is mod z squared. So this is just the same thing as 1 plus, well, z times z bar is mod z squared, and w times w bar likewise is mod w squared. Minus z, z bar, which is again mod z squared, minus w, w bar, which is minus mod w squared. So this then factorizes to 1 minus the absolute value of z squared times 1 minus the absolute value of w squared. And you can just expand this to see if your answer is correct. So that's how I prove this complex number identity.